being here tonight. And just a couple of housekeeping uh, stuff before we get started. As you know, this session is being recorded and we want to do that just so other folks can watch it at another time. Or if you had some questions, you were here and you want to rewatch it, it will be available to you and it will be up in our YouTube channel. And we will put that link in the chat shortly. Today, we're going to have a conversation with a team of access and enrollment that's going to help us walk uh, through GoCPS. Today, we're going to be utilizing the Q&A only. So if you have questions um, as, you, as we go through the presentation, please make sure that you use the Q&A uh, icon so that you can type in your question and then our team can start answering those or voice them over. Just a couple more things before we get started. Uh, and screen, you guys can see some of the upcoming sessions that we have uh, this week and next. So feel free to um, scan that QR code that you see on your screen. And also, um, if you get our emails, just click on the link so that you can RSVP for some of our other sessions that we have coming up. We are going to have College and Career actually joining us tomorrow with uh, talking about college options and CTE programs for high school. And then our team is back again, has trying to support us with GoCPS. And we will also have as the experts tomorrow with SEL and supporting what, what we're doing in a CPS to support our students. Fridays, we have a nutrition and cooking class. And then Monday, we have an SEL session in Spanish. So once again, welcome everybody to the GoCPS. Uh, application process workshop. My name is Berenice Pan, part of the FACE uh, team here in Chicago Public Schools. Today we have an awesome team joining us, giving us their expertise and how do we manage and, and maneuver this application process. So today we have Thais with us and Rohani that are going to be giving us their expertise and presenting to us. So I'm going to let them introduce themselves and tell us a little bit about themselves. Thanks so much, Bernice, and thank you. Um, so my name is Thais Huntley, and I have Rohini Bapu here. Um, she is our senior application specialist, and I am our director um, of the office. We also have on our team Megan Trinrude and Janelle Soriano, who are going to be assisting us with your, answer, your questions and answers in the Q&A button um, down below. So Thank you all for joining us. We will get started. Um, it's a lot of information that we're packing into this hour and we will have time for questions um, as we go along. So let's we'll go. Okay, so GoCPS is the platform that allows families to apply to every CPS managed school and program using one site, one application and one deadline. This is our fifth year using this process um, and we have some enhancements this year. So starting, um, we started, we opened our application on October 13th and we will be open until December 15th at five o'clock. For high school, we have all district charter and cluster high school programs for our um, uh, children with special needs. And then for elementary schools, it's all of our district elementary schools. For charter schools, you'll have to uh, speak directly or go directly to those schools for elementary. And we have two pre-K programs. Previously, we had three, but this year uh, we have two, Drummond and Souter. Everything else will go through Chicago Early Learning. So we've uh, divided the uh, application cycle into three phases. Explore where you kind of look around, see what might be a good fit for you. Apply, which is the phase we're in right now. And then selections, was hap which happens in the spring. And so we'll come back and talk to you about selections and that whole process um, once we get closer to the spring. So what are the next steps? So it's open again, the application is open right now and it will be open until December 15th and we will close at 5 p.m. So right now we wanna talk about how you go through the research and um, schools and the programs on the website. So everything can be found on go.cps.edu and go in search. And so you can type in your address and just see where your schools, what school is near you, what's designated as your neighborhood school, um, and everything um, in between. So I, I just want to pause here 
to make sure, are we, do we have the upfront slides as well? In this one, Rowini? Is it after this? I'm sorry. The what, do you, what do you mean by the upfront slides? Uh, where we just talk about all the different types of programs. Yeah, yeah, okay. it's coming. <laughs> okay, I, I felt like this is, sorry. Um, and I had a, I felt like a, there was one other question I had, but sorry, I'm, 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 I'm tracking here. So if you typed in your address in the search, you would find, for example, um, all the schools that kind of from a distance standpoint uh, meet your needs. And you'll see your neighborhood school, and then you'll see other schools based on proximity. And then you'll click on the name of the school to visit the school's profile page. So right here in the example, we have Amundsen High School. Um, you can also search here by program type and program group. So up in the right-hand corner is where there are dropdowns. So if you wanna look specifically for um, arts programs or selective enrollment programs and that so, so on and so forth, you can do that by the dropdown. So if you do click on Amundsen High School, for example, and you click on the school, it'll take you to this school profile page. And everything that has to do with our OAE office and the programs is under admissions. It's, it's not intuitive because there is a button that says programs, but our information is housed under admissions. So you can understand what the requirements are to be accepted, how many applicants there were the year before, the number of offers, everything you need to know about um, the specific program. So now, this is the slides I was thinking about. Thank you. Um, this, now we'll go into our pre-K and elementary school process and give an overview of both. So as I mentioned before, the magnet pre-K programs that we have are just two, Drummond and Souter this year. Students are selected based on a computerized lottery and you submit applications now before your student enrolls for the fall of 2022. The application process for everything else is through Chicago Early Learning, and that takes place uh, later in the spring. So what are your options uh, for schools? For, first of all, you always have your neighborhood school, and every street address is tied to a specific school, and you are entitled to go there. Um, in most cases, you can attend your neighborhood school without an application. If you want to enroll at any point, you can contact your school directly and you would find your neighborhood school in that locator that we went through in the Amundsen example. For any other schools outside of your neighborhood, you need to submit an application through GoCPS and you're not restricted to anything near your home. There we have a wide, wide variety of options, um, but you will submit your application by December 15th of this year for enrollment um, for next year, fall of 2022. So the types of schools. So we, our schools are really divided into three types. Choice, which is your magnet schools, your magnet cluster and open enrollment. And you can select up to 20 of those on the application. Selective enrollment, which has academic centers, classicals and regional gifted centers for ELs and general education. You can select up to six of those. And charter schools. Um, CPS charter schools for elementaries are run um, separately outside of those CPS and all applications are managed uh, directly at that particular charter school. So this is a breakdown of the choice schools. As I mentioned, magnet schools, those um, specialize in one subject area. There's no, uh, there's no neighborhood attendance boundary in most cases, and there is transportation provided if you live within 1.5 and 6 miles. Magnet clusters are similar for, because they have the same one subject focus area, but they do have a neighborhood boundary and out of attendance area students must apply. These schools do not provide transportation. And then open enrollment schools don't have a specialty in one area. They do have a neighborhood boundary and they accommodate neighborhood students first. Out of attendance area students must apply and they also do not provide transportation. So our selective enrollment schools, we have a, a variety of types. Um, our academic centers are housed in existing high schools. So uh, places like Limbloom, Whitney Young, Taft um, have academic centers within their high school. This program only serves seventh and eighth grade and they really allow high achieving students to take classes um, that are accelerated um, in different subjects. For classical schools, 
These are schools that provide accelerated programming in a theme like literature, math, language, art, humanities. Regional gifted are instructional programs that are accelerated um, and, and they really deal with thinking, problem solving and reasoning. And then the Regional Gifted Center for ELs is similar, um, except the primary language spoken there is Polish or Spanish. So these are the requirements for the academic, for the um, selective enrollment schools. You can see that um, academic centers have a GPA minimum of 2.5 and uh, 3.0 for classical and regional gifted. And then the regional gifted for ELs requires no lower than a B for the final reading and math grade from their previous school. For academic centers, um, students are selected based on a system of 600 total points, and that also includes grades and the admissions exam. And then the admiss exam, the admissions exam for um, the other uh, programs is what <clears throat> they're based on, um, just the admissions exam, no grades for the other programs. And students with IEPs, um, their, uh, their requirements are the same as for general education. Um, and the other thing is that we do take into account socioeconomic tier in the entry level grades. And we'll talk a little bit more about what tier means for those who aren't familiar. So once you've um, figured out, you know, which schools in which buckets you can, this is how, what it looks like a visual of how many programs you can apply to. For your neighborhood, you get, you're guaranteed a seat. So you get that one automatic neighborhood choice um, right away. And then choice schools, you can receive up, you can apply to up to 20 schools and receive up to 20 offers. In this example, the uh, student received the offers and then was waitlisted for the um, schools in the kind of light red. And so you'll have a waitlist number there um, and different schools move their waitlists, waitlists at different paces. And then for selective enrollment schools, you have you can choose one of each of the types. So in this example, the person chose an academic center, a regional gifted, a regional gifted for English, and then an international gifted program. Um, yeah. Okay, so now we will move over to high school. So high school, we have um, we for your neighborhood school, um, you do not have to apply uh, just the same way that it's in the um, previous in elementary schools. Um, if you're interested in your neighborhood school though, we do encourage you to put it um, on your application and your order of preference, just so that we have it for tracking purposes and are able to um, understand your true preference there. Just like with elementary schools, we have choice programs and selective uh, enrollment programs. Choice programs include neighborhood, magnet, uh, CTE, which is career and technical programs, um, elementary IB programs and charter schools. This year for our IB, which is International Baccalaureate, we do not require um, uh, information sessions. Uh, we stopped doing those last year and decided to continue with that. It used to be a requirement for applying, uh, so that's no longer. Military schools still require a essay and a grit survey, uh, but everything else, the most everything else, the requirements are right there and they're not additional. And then you have your selective enrollment programs and there are 11 programs listed here uh, across the city. So program types, um, as you do in elementary, you have the option to choose um, from from your program types. For choice, you select up to 20, but what's different here is that you only get one offer. In high school, it's the single best offer. So we really encourage families to rank your choices in the way in which you would want to attend. Like whatever is your number one, put that number one and so forth. Uh, for selective enrollment programs, you select up to six. And again, it's similar to the choice, you get a single best offer. So for high school, you can receive up to four offers. You can receive an offer at your continuing school. Continuing schools are, are um, schools that have seventh and eighth grade program, seventh and eighth grade programs, and then also have a high school program that you don't have to apply to. So if you're already there in seventh grade, you do not have to apply. You're are, you're guaranteed a seat. For neighborhood schools, you're also guaranteed a seat, which we talked about. And then in this example. 
you, the person received an offer from their number three ranked school. So then they're wait listed at their other choices that were higher. And then for the selective enrollment, you do not have a wait list. So this person uh, received an offer from their, their rank number two school. And so that's what they received. They have just that additional offer there. So the selection process for, for choice programs, programs is either lottery or point system. And then it's the priority preference. So some examples of priority preference include like siblings, proximity, if you're in that continuing enrollment, your attendance area, um, elementary preference, tier overlay, staff preference. So the process for, some, for selective enrollment is a little different. So we have the CPS high school admissions exam, which I'll talk a little bit more about on the next slide. We also take into account your final seventh grade grades. Some schools require admission screenings. Um, some have a geographical preference and some may have essays and recommendations. So then um, in this example, there are four seats and six applicants. So if you are able to get you know, one of the seats, then you're then you receive the offer and then the other two um, are waitlisted. So all out of this example, there are four, four people that receive their offer, the other two are waitlisted. So for the selective enrollment process, it's similar. Um, so there's point system and this is where tier comes into place. Tiers are your socioeconomic tiers that the city is divided into through um, one through four. And you, when you go on the school locator, you can understand if you put your address in, it'll also tell you your tier. And so there are point, we, we have a, a point where 30% of the seats are filled by students with their highest score. And then the remaining seats are filled of 25% in each group um, with the highest tier. And so again, it's your seventh grade grades, the high school admissions exam score, and then depending on your tier, that plays a role as well. So it's a total of 900 points this year. This is different from last year because we no longer have NWEA. Um, last year we had NWEA grades and the selective enrollment exam. This year we have grades and they account for 50% of your total. And so the point uh, breakdown is below so on the convergence of what how many points each grade letter grade um, computes to. And then the other 450 points is made up of the high school admissions exam score. So they're um, half and half, 25, 225 points for ELA and 225 points for math. So I wanna talk a little bit more about the high school admissions exam because we get a lot of questions on this. So this year we're using just the high school admissions exam for every program um, that requires any um, admission criteria. So that includes selective enrollment, IB, some CTE programs, military, fine arts, anything else that says that they're requiring test scores. And we will not have NWA at all this year. So current CPS students are actually going to be taking the test next week. It's, we've been saying this for a long time. I can't believe it's actually next week. Um, this is administered through the, our Office of Student Assessment. So if you have specific questions about testing environment or times or things of that nature, we invite you to reach out to the student assessment. Um, your student is already set to take to take the test at their school. You don't need to register, you don't need to do anything else. And that's the case for CPS charter school students as well. So for non-CPS students, we've listed the dates here. They're coming up over the course of the next two weekends um, after, after this one. So the 13th, the 14th, the 20th, and the 21st, you do have to sign up for these. And when you apply to certain programs that require testing, you're prompted to sign up for the test um, and it will be at a CPS high school location. Um, students, yeah, so you will take it when you take the, when you sign up. So the point total, as I mentioned before, is 450. The ELA section is worth 225 points and it consists of vocabulary, reading and language. And then the math section is also worth, two, worth 225 points and it's just one section of math. Okay, so, oh, this is a, 
updated slide looks so pretty. Uh, so the CPS high school admission exam is a computer based exam. So this is different. The previous um, selective enrollment exam was paper and pencil. So for reading, this is a description of what the types of questions are like and the timing and the number of items. We, we got a lot of questions about the breakdown and wanted to know more. So we even, we've added this. Uh, the written expression uh, just is you testing your ability to really use the effective standard American English writing. Um, math is really quantitative problems. And then vocabulary is a cross section of just general communication. And that's the shortest. Uh, segment. So it's a total of two hours and 15 minutes with 174 items. So now in, I'm going to pass it over to Rohini to kind of walk you through the steps and show you with screenshots what it looks like, where you click, and how you would go through the application process um, on our website, go.cps.edu. Great. Thanks, Thais. Um, okay, so if you are ready to complete your application, the best place to start is the GoCPS website, and that would just be go.cps.edu. Once you get to the GoCPS website, you're going to click the Apply Now button that um, is in the top right corner. And when you click that button, you'll come to a login screen that looks like this. Okay, so when you get to this login screen, regardless of whether you've had a GoCPS account in the past, everybody for the first time that they come to the new platform will have to create an account. Okay, so if you try to put in your old username and password, it's not going to work. You have to start over with a new account. And then after you create the account, every time moving forward, then you can just put in your email address and password here. There is also the option in this top corner to change the language of the page. And so there are several options that you can, um, that you can pick from and that will change all of the language on that page. So once you're asked to create your account, you're going to fill out um, your basic information here. One thing I do wanna call out is that you'll have to enable text messages or email notifications. You can choose one or both, but you have to at least pick one of these. And this is going to be the best way for our office to communicate with you. Okay, once you get all of this filled out, you're going to go ahead and hit that create account button at the bottom. And what's what you're going to see next is what we're, we call the dashboard. So you're going to see that your name here or the parent name, whatever you filled out as the parent name. Um, and then you'll see that there are no students the first time that you come here, there'll be no students linked to your uh, parent account. And so that's what we wanna do first. We wanna get, uh, get started by adding your student to your account. Okay, so when you add a student, this is, this is really, really important. When you add a student, you're gonna to come to a page that looks like this. And depending on whether you toggle to the yes or the no, it's going to look somewhat different. So this is when the, it's toggled to yes, and this is when it's toggled to no. The question that you're answering yes or no to is whether or not your student has a CPS ID. Now, regardless of whether your student is a current CPS student or not, if they've ever had a CPS ID, so that could mean that they've been a CPS student in the past and now are not, or whether they have never been a CPS student, but they have a CPS ID because of IEPs or anything like that. If a CPS ID has ever been created for your student, you must answer this question as yes. Um, and so when you hit yes, these four fields are going to come up. So it's gonna ask for that student ID, first name, last name, and date of birth. When you put in your first and last name, make sure that you put it in exactly as what you gave to CPS or what is in Aspen for our current CPS students. So what that means is if your name has hyphens or apostrophes or any of those other characters, make sure those are also included um, in these two fields. If you put in these four fields and it's saying that no student is found, 
the chances are pretty good that you haven't put it in exactly as our system has it. So try something else. And if you can't get it, please call our office so we can look it up for you. Please do not just move just move, go to no and create a new account. What we will have to do then on the back end is try to merge those accounts. So please, if you know you have an ID, go through the yes um, flow. But if your student has never had a CPS ID, um, you're going to hit no here and you'll see that those four questions disappear. So then all you need to do is hit I agree and then continue to the, um, to the application. One other thing I do want to point out is when you put these four fields in, that's what's really getting all of your current um, information into the application. So you won't have to, you know, retype in your address or your phone number or things like that that CPS already has on file. Also, for our diverse learners, if you have IEP or 504 information, um, that is also going to be automatically pulled in if you successfully link your student using the CPS ID. Okay, so once you get into the application, you will notice that there is a menu on the left side of the screen, and this is the best way to navigate through all the steps of the application you will notice that there's this like little arrow that looks like a back button. Never push this button. It will take you back to the beginning and make you restart everything. So uh, just avoid this button at all costs. If you need to go back to any of the steps, you can just actually go back by clicking the, the menu here. You can go to any of the steps in whatever order, just use this menu, avoid the, the red boxed arrow. So the very, very last thing that you'll do after you go through all the steps is you will review and send. So when you get to the screen, just make sure that all of the information on the screen um, is exactly as you want it. If you do need to make a change, go ahead and just go back to that step using the menu on the left-hand side, and then you can make the changes that you need. When the application is exactly as you want it, make sure that you hit the submit application button uh, down here at the bottom. Once you hit the submit application button, you'll notice that you'll be taken back to the student dashboard. And so here you can see now that I have completed the application and successfully linked my student here, you'll see that it no longer says get started, but it'll actually have a tile for that student. If you have additional students or children, you can just add a student and go through that process again with your second or third kid. You can add as many kids as you need to to your account. From here, there's a couple other things you can do. You can see exactly how many applications that you have already submitted. And if you'd like to see any of those applications, you're going to hit the view all button here. So once you hit view all, you're going to be taken into a screen that looks like this. And what you'll see on the screen is on the left hand side of the screen, you'll see any events that you have scheduled. Um, so here you can see in my, you know, uh, example here, this student applied to a military program and so they have a military uh, information set session scheduled. If you have the ability to uh, reschedule, this button here, the Modify RSVP, will be a little bit darker than this. Um, depending on the, 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 sorry, the admission screening, some of these have, you know, one reschedule allowed. Some of them have no reschedules allowed. There's generally an, uh, a deadline as to when you can reschedule if you need to, but you could click this and, you know, choose a new time if you needed to do that. If you've already exhausted all of your um, reschedule attempts, then uh, it'll gray out like this. On the right-hand side of this screen, though, you'll see all of the applications that you had applied to. Um, and you know, if you need to withdraw any of these applications, you can do so by just clicking the withdraw button here. But if you need to make any changes, you can do so by clicking either of these two buttons, the edit ranking button or this little pencil um, icon. 
If you press the, either of these buttons, it's gonna take you right back into the application. And so this is where you can add or remove programs. This is where if you want to re-rank your programs, you can do it from here. Um, all we ask is like, if you do make any changes, just make sure that you go to the very last step and hit submit so that those changes are, um, are submitted. You can make any of these changes up until the application deadline of December 15th at five o'clock. So in the past, our re-rank deadline has been after the application deadline. And so this is a change. The re-rank re deadline this year is the same as the application deadline. So after December 15th, you will not be able to make any changes to your application. Okay, we have one more family training um, scheduled and we'll probably schedule a few more before the 15th, but um, I think Bernice already had mentioned this, but it's uh, tomorrow uh, from two to three. So if you wanna see all of this over again, uh, please join us tomorrow as well. The other thing we do urge you all to do is if you haven't done so already, please go to um, our, our contact page on the GoCPS website and subscribe to our mailing list. This is the best way for you to get all of the information that you need as it's coming out. So this is the best way to ensure that you don't miss deadlines, you, you are aware of any changes if they happen, um, and so on. So uh, if you haven't done so already, please do this. If you were on the subscription list last year, you have to resubscribe every year. So please make sure that you do subscribe. And then of course, if you ever have any questions, our call center is um, open, um, the phone number is there, or you can always email us at gocps at cps.edu. So I guess at this point, we can open it up for questions. Yeah, no, no. thank you oh. for that. Sorry, no, <laughs> thank no, you. Go, Bernice, they, they're both been for really for you too, the <laughs> other, the outstanding too, I think, um, about emailing this video, how will um, attendees receive the video? For sure. Um, so yes, we usually um, have the video up in the next two or three days after the session and it will be on our YouTube channel. We can also just, uh, once it's up and ready, um, we can email everybody that RSVP today and send that out to you guys. And Leticia, the link for tomorrow, no, it's different. Uh, it's not the same link. So if you RSVP for that, an email is sent out to you um, to get that link for that uh, session. And sorry, we don't keep the same link. We just have a lot of different sessions going on. Um, so that's why the links are not usually um, the same. So the RSVP is still open. So if you want to come back, you can do that and, and sign up again. Um, again, this video will be up in the next two or three days. Uh, as soon as we download it for the cloud and put a couple of things in for CPS, then it will go up on our YouTube channel. Thanks. And Rohini, can you explain the, or maybe we could have Janelle, I don't know if her mic is on, um, the questions about, can you explain the kindergarten testing process? Uh, yeah, I can, unless Janelle is your, you're the testing expert, so I'll defer to you, but if your mic is not working, I can definitely answer. Okay, I'm here. All right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> can you hear me, everyone? We can. Um, Okay, um, is this uh, a pre-K going into kindergarten? If a pre-K going into kindergarten, this will be a one-on-one -on -one testing compared to just a kindergarten going into first grade, this will be a group testing for that. Um, so which is a little bit different um, compared to, so that's how the testing would work compared to pre-K versus kindergarten. Okay, and yep, and you you will be prompted to sign up for those tests when you apply to a program. So if you're was you know just not sure about exactly the question, so want to cover everything that if you sign up, uh, if you apply to a program that requires kindergarten testing, or if it's for first or another grade, um, you'll be prompted to select your test date right there, and then you will receive more information and like a testing ticket once you are closer to the test time. 
Um, I see another question about, oh, well, what month does kindergarten testing usually occur? Um, we, I'll let Janelle do this, but I know we start, is it this month that we're starting? Yes. So right it's now started, in November. Okay. Yeah, it started cool. actually month, yesterday. yesterday. Yeah, yeah, it started this week. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it started this week. Um, so there are testing dates available for that. Um, and that's what usually occurs, that it starts pretty early because pre-K is probably one of our, our biggest ones to test. So yeah, we start pretty early for that. And, and it goes all the way, add more dates ahead. as we go. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And I see a few people had their hands raised, but if you're able to type your questions in the Q&A and then we can answer those um, verbally um, or, or type them in. Yeah, thank you for that, um, Thais. Yeah, if you guys can just type in your, your questions, that's helpful. Thank you guys. Um, okay, and so one of the next questions is when does selections, when are selections made for selective enrollment for kindergarten? And that is in the spring. Um, we will announce generally it's in, we try to target March for high school and then elementary comes out later in the spring, generally in um, April. Uh, for selective enrollment admissions, are diverse learners judged by the same criteria as non-diverse learners? Um, for, so, no, they're they're not. So, for high school, there are there's a different pool for diverse learners. Um, there's a certain percentage of allocated seats at high schools for diverse learners, and so there there's um, that they're still tiered within that pool, and then um, seats are determined that way. Uh, I only see the edit ranking. Where can I find the edit button for adding more schools or editing list of originally selected schools? I'll let so if you, if you go into edit ranking, it'll take you to the ranking page, but from there you can navigate using that menu on the left-hand side of the screen. You can go back to the program selection page, I think is what it's called. And then you would be able to go through, do your search just like you did the first time and add or remove schools just by finding them and clicking the little checkbox next to the program that you want to apply to. Okay. Um, is the admissions test for the sixth graders taken for the academic centers the same as the admissions test for eighth graders who take the admissions for selective, high, selective enrollment high schools? Go, go ahead, Ronnie. Oh, no. So the, the test that the sixth graders take in order to get into an academic center is the regional gifted exam. Um, it's just, it's at a seventh grade level. Um, the test that eighth graders are taking this uh, um, high school admissions exam is different. Um, okay, and Holly, yes, I'm going to answer this one out loud and loudly. Yes, it does. So the question is, does it matter how you rank the choice schools since you can receive multiple offers? So in elementary, no. Elementary choice schools, you can receive multiple offers, but there's no rank for elementary. But in high school, it is. There are the rank matters, um, and you can receive one offer um, for, for each selective enrollment and choice. And so we encourage you to rank in the way in which you would want to attend the schools. We get a lot of questions about, should I, you know, I think I may get into this one. Should I put it first? I, you really should put first the school you really want to go to. We, that's the way our algorithm is paired. You know, they, we try to rank people, match people with their rank and move on down, down the selection process. So, so yes, it is very important to rank as you would like to attend. Can I add one thing? Yeah. Um, for elementary, yes, you don't have to rank choice, but you do have to rank the selective enrollment schools. So please make sure that you do differentiate between those two. And then one other thing, question we get a lot is if there's any, like, am I gonna get penalized for ranking something first versus like seventh or whatever? And no, there's no penalty to how you rank it, which is why I'm gonna mirror what, exactly what Tai said, please rank things in the order that you want to attend them. Doesn't matter um, what someone else ranks it, if they rank it much higher, they don't have a better chance of getting in because of how they ranked it. Yes. Uh, I see another question about saying, can you talk about round two and principal discretion? Yes, so for 
Round two, we, we open up round two for those schools that still have seats after we've gone through the round one process. And that's generally, you know, what is it like? So we usually have two weeks to accept or decline. And then it's a, about a week or so after that, after uh, selections go out. <clears throat> the principal discretion process opens um, right around the same time as round two. And it is for um, specifically for selective enrollment high schools. If you've applied, and you can apply to kind of be considered, there's a whole process of um, essay um, and any recommendations, any supporting materials. If you are trying to um, get into a school that you ranked on your original application, it's critical. You can't have, you know, not put Jones on your original application and say, oh, I'd like to apply to Jones through principal discretion. It has to be a school that was originally on your application. Um, each school has a limited number of slots that, um, that we, it's not usually generally um, shared each year. You know, you can ask or show or share the previous year, but it's a percentage of their total um, enrollment at the freshman high, at the freshman level. So, for example, Lane Tech is a large school. They would have more principal discretion slots available versus King High School or something like that. Um, should we apply if it's our district school, and how do we rank that if we do? I'll let Rohini answer that one. A district school, are we assuming that's a neighborhood school? I think so. That's, that's what I'm um, Okay, so if, if you, again, if you truly want to go to your neighborhood school, that's like the school that you want to go to more than any other school, then rank it first. So again, like truly just rank the schools, regardless of whether it's a school that you have a guaranteed seat for or not, rank them in the exact order that you want to attend them. Right, thanks. So if you qualify for a, oh, that went away, someone answered it, okay. Um, in the case of more kids tying for selective enrollment high school spots than are available, how will the tiebreaker be determined this year? I.e., if more people get 900 points, let's say, than spots available, how will the selection work? So we have we actually have a tiebreaker process that we used in previous years that would still apply because it has to do with um, letter grade and so forth and so on. And we will revisit this once we get to the selection phase. We are this this question has come up a lot. I know people are eager, um, and so we want to find out what 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 everything looks like, and and we will um, apply a tiebreaker. But we do have options that we already have um, in place that we can we can use going that, going forward. And the question um, about principals, uh, high school and athletics, if this is principal choice, principal discretion is is exactly what that is. It's it's a completely up to the principal how they want to um, you know send those offers out. Uh, I would just say that it don't count on principal discretion. It's a very, very small population of people that get in on principal discretion. It's your chances of that are very, very low. So uh, if you, if, you know, that's all I'm going to say, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Um, if you received a choice or select an enrollment high school offer in round one, Will you be offered another in round two, or will every high school applicant only get one offer from each selective enrollment and choice high school? So the answer is, yeah, you, if for choice, you have the one offer, but you are on wait list. So you receive one choice offer, and then you're wait listed otherwise. You can apply for round two, but you have to realize for high school, if you get that offer from round two, you have it will forfeit your round one. So we encourage people only apply to round two if you are willing to let go of that round one offer, because if you receive it, you will not be able to have your round one offer. Now for high school, for, for selective enrollment, there are no wait lists. And we have maybe one or two selective enrollment schools do go into the second round um, and you could apply that way, but it's not, again, you'd have to be willing to lose your other offer um, as I mentioned before. Because the only schools that participate in round two are ones that still have seats after round one is complete. So not, not very many schools might be on the round two application. Okay, and this one, I don't know if this is a continuation from another question that was typed or another conversation saying that you applied, both your daughter signed up for one test and then 
could look the other test is two hours earlier on the same day. That might be, unless someone was already responding to you, that might be one that you could email, email us um, at OAE or go, go cps.edu, right? Janelle is actually typing an answer um, or if, if you need to email us, because if it's a specific situation, we're not, it's hard to address here, but okay, someone will respond to you. Okay, great, thank you. Awesome, this, your team did an amazing job going through that Q&A, uh, so I think we're good. Fantastic. I think a couple of things too, if you guys can reiterate, I know we're talking about testing and testing for those eighth, munch, eighth grade munchkins. When is that happening? If you're a CPS student, are we good to go? So if you guys can reinforce that a little bit. Oh, I'm on mute. And I was really talking, Bernice, I was talking. Uh, yes, so for CPS students, uh, the high school admissions test is Tuesday. This coming Tuesday, November 9th, they will take it at their school and there will not, there's no sign up necessary. You're all set to go. Um, just show up rested and, and ready. Um, for non-CPS students, you will take it starting on the weekend of the 13th. Um, so Saturday the 13th and 14th, and then the following Saturday, uh, the 20th and the 21st, those you have to sign up, um, you sign up through your application. So when you apply to a program that requires testing, you'll be prompted to enter in uh, your information and, and sign up to test. We are, the testing will, this is something I want to reiterate, Bernice, the testing will close for non-CPS students on November 10th. So please make sure you've signed up um, and done your application and signed up to test by the 10th. Again, you can re-rank your choices later. So don't let the uh, decision about which school or I'm not sure, I don't want to select something and then I take the test, you know, you can, you can move things around all you like until the application closes on December 15th. So don't worry about that. Um, just make sure you've uh, selected your test date and, and are ready to go. Uh, so what happens for students who are not at school on Tuesday when they take the high school admissions test? There is a makeup date um, of December 7th for those students who are unable to take the test at their school. Um, they will be tested on that day at school. And then um, I also want to mention the tutorial. I'll let Rohini talk a little bit about the tutorial that we have in place for the high school admissions test. Um, and you usually see that when you sign up. Yeah, as you're going through the, uh, the application, you'll see a question that asks if you'd like to attend a completely optional in-person uh, high school exam tutorial session. It's in-person. It's I think it's about 30 or 40 minutes um, long, um, and it's you know, I think it's being housed at one of our high schools. Um, but if you would like to attend that session or have your student attend that session, you would just click yes for that question. And then it'll ask you on the next step then to schedule that exam or sorry, that that event. Um, it, again, it is completely optional. So if you have no interest in that, you can just hit no and you know, you don't you're not going to be asked to schedule anything and it's not going to penalize you or anything like that. Um, yeah, that's it. Oh, great. And yeah, it's actually uh, two high schools are hosting the exam, the, the tutorial. So, um, and then what is the location of the testing for pre-K students going to kindergarten? That is, I, I, is, am I speaking correctly? Okay. That is um, IIT, Illinois Institute of Technology. It is, um, that's where we always house the pre-K testing and um, we have it. There's parking available. Um, it's easy to access. Uh, please remind us, when will results be available for elementary and high school SE tests? I have two. So for high school testing, we will make results available before the application window closes. We're targeting at some point in December uh, before the application window closes. For elementary, um, I'm going to let Janelle answer that because I don't know if we're sharing test results in advance. No, we're not. It won't be until the spring um, for that, for doing results. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. Um, how will CPS deal with kids missing the high school test on Tuesday? Do they need sick note? What if not coming so they can get an extra month of study? 
Um, so again, we our office does not manage that whole process. It's the Office of Student Assessment, um, and I, I'm pretty sure they they probably sent something about how that's pro, you know how that'll be handled or what's required. Um, you know, unfortunately, folks try to game systems or think something is different. This you know this test is is really an aptitude test about your learning abilities. It's not anything that more time is really going to give you. So if you know we can't monitor people's decisions, but um, um, we encourage everyone that's available to, to test because there will not be another test. So if that person really is sick <laughs> the next time, then you know there's nothing we can do about it. So if you're looking for like what your school specifically is doing, I would ask your school. Yeah, and counselors um, will have a good idea too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Thank you guys for, for all those answers. I think uh, if the test is this Tuesday, make sure your munchkins sleep the night before. They have a really good breakfast, uh, you know, yeah. that morning and just encourage them that they're going to do great because I know kids are always super nervous. So just encourage them, tell them how fantastic they are and send them on their way. And, you know, they'll, they'll do the best that they can um for that testing so thank you guys and i know we're, we're coming to a close uh again your team's been awesome today like answering all the questions so i guess um same thing as we did last time i think for from all of you guys from your team thinking of that that one thing that you want parents to leave with today it was a lot of information a lot of really good questions that they asked and answers um knowing that kids are going to test next week parents are a little anxious we can see from the questions that they have what what is the main thing that you guys want parents to leave today with? Yeah, I think for me, it would just be about exploring all your choices. I know a lot of people get hung up on the selective enrollment, especially for kindergarten. Um, and I understand, but I, you know, especially for high school and elementary, we have so many programs, so many, we see them all. And they're all, they're just like so interesting and different, tailored for different folks. So please make sure you explore and take a little more time for CPS students. Like there's no penalty or any, you know, kind of, there's no advent, advantage to waiting a little while to take some time and explore, or maybe adding, you know, submitting an application and then coming back. But it's not a rush. Um, for non-CPS students who are doing testing for select and enrollment, there is a time urgency to make sure you sign up. But again, you can come back, rank, um, and later change your options. So just um, I know it's a stressful process. I know there's a lot of anxiety, but just try to take your time um, and do some research, ask questions, um, reach out to our office, check out our website. We put a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of information there, and we really worked hard to make it um, accessible and user-friendly. Thank you. Rahani, is there anything you want them to leave? I know there's a Spanish question, but I'll touch bases with that parent. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I would definitely, you know, second everything Ty you said and just add then as you're going into ranking, just like truly make sure that you are ranking based on where you actually want to attend, especially for our high school folk. Um, yeah, just don't don't try to rank it to try to gain the system. You're you're only going to hurt yourself if you try to do that. Fantastic. Thank you guys for, for the information. Griselda, uh, veo que tiene usted una pregunta. Eh, puse mi correo electrónico en el, en el chat. Me puede mandar la pregunta. No sé si es algo específico de un caso especial y yo la puedo conectar con alguien del grupo para contestarle su pregunta. Ok. Perfect. All right, guys. I see that they're putting more stuff in the chat. We have like two, three more minutes. I don't know if you want to address any of those before we, we disconnect with the folks. Uh -oh. Yeah, it looks like Janelle's typing for one. And then this other question is, so if you qualify for a school but selected the school number two, does that mean you won't be selected? Myth page, Buster's page says differently. So again, you know, we encourage you to rank in order of your preference. If you, you are matched based on the spacing in your ranking. And so if you are, if, if you qualify but selected the school's number two, if you are matched with number one, depending on the space and everything, you'll get number one. If not, we'll move on down to number two. There's no guarantee. Um, the goal is to try to get everyone to get their number one white school, but that obviously due to space and limitations doesn't um, always happen. But we, again, encourage you to rank in the order um, that you are received. And we know if you qualify because we, we receive your um, scores on the back end and are able to match that way. 
Yeah, and, and Griselda, for, for your question, if uh, you need to um, sign up for a test, if your student is in eighth grade in CPS, they'll take the test on Tuesday, so you don't have to sign up for anything. But if it's not a CPS student, then yes, the, uh, the team share that during the presentation. There's when you're signing up, they'll give you dates and, and times for you to sign up for that test. And I see your question, Tiana, saying, will we know if we qualify? You will You will know what your scores are at the end, so you can go back and see there's, will we always post like the uh, score map? So you'll see if you have a tier, what, what your score would be, and you'll know what the point totals all are, so you can do the back end work yourself to verify once the um, scores come out. Uh, principal discretion is only for selective enrollment schools. Awesome. All right, ladies, I think our, our time has run out. Thank you so much, everybody, for your questions. There were some amazing questions to your team for powering through and, and typing away the answers for you guys voicing over the, the answers to some of those questions. Parents, thank you so much for joining us and giving us your time. To our interpreter, thank you for uh, providing access to our Spanish speakers. And everybody, have a great night, and we'll see you next time. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you, guys. Have a good one. Thank you. Bye-bye, everybody.